What's up guys, Donald Douglas 2000 here, and if you've been in the Thomas community for the past around three years, you've probably seen this, or this, or this recommended to you. This video that you're watching right now is about an ongoing series known as Horror of the Rails, originally created by Narrow Gauge. This series would consist of Thomas and Friends horror audio stories that would go public every single Halloween for everyone's enjoyment. Now, if you're a fan of Narrow Gauge, you'll probably know that the final episode recently premiered on July 15th, 2022, and it was a perfect way to end the series out with a bang. Now that the series has concluded, today we are going to be ranking every single episode of Horror of the Rails, and if there are some videos on this list that you haven't seen yet, huge spoiler alert, as we go through every episode, I'll briefly state the plot of each one. And I just want to say this before we start ranking all of these, all of the categories that I put each episode into is complete and utterly true fact, and if you disagree with me, I'm sorry, you got the wrong opinion, this is the internet, oh my god. I'm sorry, I could not keep a straight face while doing that. I am 100% joking. You're allowed to have your own opinion, I'm allowed to have my own. All the episodes that I'll put on here are all just my opinion, and you're welcome to have yours. And before we start the video, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new cool action. So here is the entire layout right here in all the episodes, and before I get any comments saying, But Sam, why didn't you just use the Tier Maker website? Why did you have to make a Google slide? <laughs> that is very true. I could indeed use the Tier Maker website. However, when I tried to create an account in order to make a template and everything, you can only sign in with a Twitter account, and I don't want to make a Twitter account. I am perfectly fine with sticking to my YouTube community tab. So then I spent about an hour or so taking screenshots of every single thumbnail, cropping them, sizing them up, and in after inserting them, them into here and then making a table adding colors and text box and everything to make this layout and what better place to start ranking every episode of horror of the rails with the beginning the first episode was henry and the ghost train it took me a little bit to realize that this was a chris audrey story but i think that was a pretty good choice of a story to my knowledge i'm not sure if christopher audrey wrote too many spooky scary thomas stories narrow gauge definitely utilized it and i do like that this is a chris audrey story pretty much what's happening is that a circus is arriving to the island of Sodor. One of their attractions is a ghost ride train tunnel thingy, I think. Henry thinks it's silly and that there's no such thing as ghosts, but his crew takes him on a journey through the tunnel and he experienced some things in there that he's not sure if they're real or not. You'll probably know that this is the very shortest episode of the entire series, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm, I'm not that big of a fan of super short audio stories because what I like doing is putting on some headphones or earbuds and sitting back and relaxing and listening to them and three, three and a half minutes isn't too much time to relax or get yourself into the mood of hearing the story but at the same time the music choices are fairly good and the voicing is pretty nicely done as well. So the final category that I'm gonna place Henry and the Ghost Train in is the okay category. Category. The main thing that kind of ruined it for me just a little bit is the short duration of it. Story number two, Big Six. So a boy is walking home on a trail to his parents' cabin, and then he hears a noise that sounds like a loud steam engine whistle. He quickly hides behind a tree and then sees one of the scrapped Big Six engines, and then witnesses something, or rather hears something horrifying in his encounter with this spectral steam engine. I quite like this story because it's a human encountering the steam engine rather than another locomotive. The second factor of why I really like it is because of the sound effects. When the boy is walking back to the cabin, you can hear the footsteps. You feel a little surprised when you hear that steam engine whistle. There's- I still haven't been able to find it for whatever reason. There's something about it that just is chilling. I really don't know how to explain it, but it's also so satisfying to hear. The music, especially the music at the beginning, was really, really good. I think the big six, the ghost train, is gonna have to go into the nice category. Oh boy, Caledonian Twins. This one is probably one of the most memorable episodes of the series. I, as well as many other individuals, really like this one because it's one of the first insights we've been given on Donald and Douglas's life on their 
their old line and their experience with the whole dieselization era. So a diesel is to stay with Donald and Douglas. Douglas feels a bump and is almost pushed into the ocean a few days later. He is fortunately saved by his twin Donald. They witness another catastrophe that doesn't have that too happy of an ending. Together, they figure out and put a stop to the suspect who is causing these mishaps. First off, the voice actors in here are phenomenal, especially since Victor Tanzig absolutely nail the Scottish accent with Donald and Douglas, as well as the story is also really good. I'm gonna put this in the great category. This story is very good, but in my opinion, there's just a couple other stories that triumph over it. Now, for story number four, drum roll please. Train. Literally, that's just, that's just what it's called. It's just called Train. <laughs> it's pretty much a, a story telling, quote-unquote, the legend of the witch trains, which are pretty much strange trains that people, that people traveling in the South African countryside at night encounter, and then they climb aboard, never to return again. I really like this one because it's almost like a tutorial or something. It takes you on a quest to board one of these trains that takes you to a supernatural location, where then you can collect sacred, mysterious pieces of text and then travel back safely. There's not too much to say about it, but I like it because it's almost like a tour guide or something. And because of that, I'm gonna put it in the great category right next to Caledonian Twins. Okay, Rusty and the Boulder, this one is a very good one. The music choices are very good, and the variety of voice actors gives it a little bit more life to it. And we're told that the catastrophe that the Scarlowy Railway engines experienced wasn't the first time someone attempted to open up the quarry in which the Boulder inhabited. However, we've seen many, 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 many adaptations of Rusty and the Boulder, and we all know what ha what happens. Don't get me wrong, the extra story in here is very good and it and it makes it more intriguing but there's just stories that I like more than others so I'm gonna put this in the hmm should I put it in the nice or okay category uh, I'm gonna put it in the nice category mainly because of the voice actors next up is Proteus's experimental engines yes we are counting the canceled horror of the rails episode because I really really like it Merlin Lexi and Theo aren't mentioned too often in the Thomas community aside from reviews of journey beyond Sodor of course Proteus is pretty much a ghost in this story he has to protect some treasures of some sort that are hidden around the world, and he thinks he can't do it by himself. He chooses three engines, Merlin, Lexi, and Theo, to help him and experiment to see if it'll turn out good or bad. Little does he know that he will very much regret it in the long run. The format of this story is quite nice because it's Proteus speaking into some sort of microphone and making audio entries. He's placing them somewhere around the world for someone to find. And the overall story is pretty nice as well. So I think I'm gonna put Proteus's experimental engines in the nice category. Now for the first debut of Horror of the Rails 2, Train Ride. Yeah, that's what it's called, Train Ride. So far, we've seen quite a few non-Thomas stories. Technically, it's still living up to the title of the series, because it doesn't say the horrors of Thomas and his friends or something like that. It's called Horror of the Rails, and a train obviously runs on rails, and it has to do with rails. Hashtag loopholes! This one's also a pretty short one, too, but it's rather intriguing. A man is traveling home from work late at night. He boards the train. Along the journey, he starts to experience some odd things while inside of his coach. The story is very brief, but it's very intriguing. You never know what's gonna what's gonna happen next. And truth be told, we never do know what ha what happens next. The somewhat absent music in this story is one of the main points that makes it very eerie. So I think I'm gonna put it in the bad category. This video is so horrible. I'm kidding. And I accidentally left clicked. What do you know? This uh, video is probably gonna have to go into the nice category. Now for, without doubt, the most popular horror of the rail story, Left Behind. This one is about a tank engine that's being shipped to a railway called the Mid-Sodor Railway with another engine there called Duke, or as he would call him, Dookie. Now, you can probably see when I mention an engine being taken to the MSR with Duke and stuff, and judging by the thumbnail, it's Smudger. You probably guessed it the first time I showed Showed this little template here. In the Thomas community, the thought of Smudger or Stanley from the Railway series being turned into a pumping engine is no stranger. 
However, we've not really seen too many of them that cover his perception of the whole thing. And in the story, we get we really get to see how confident Smudger is and how he's trying to do his best, but his rushed build causes people to believe otherwise. Because of the amazing narration in here done by Narrow Gage in here again, and the music providing a very eerie tone in this story, I'm gonna put it in the great category. The next story is known as Mora Lyoth. An engine has been engulfed in water and sand for as long as she can remember. All she could do was simply stare up and think about her old life when she was an actual functioning tank engine. When, all of a sudden, someone seems to notice her, and then she is eventually pulled out of the water. But however, this, I, I do not want to spoil the rest of the story, because let's just say that it, it, it ends kind of sad. But this story is, wow. This story is really, really, really amazing. First off, because it's not written like how you would originally think, like, one day, Thomas was doing the yada 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 this, this, and this, and this. It's, like, it's written as if it's almost like a poem of some sort. And not to mention the overall sad plot of the story of the story is what makes it good. So because of those two reasons, this is we are gonna have the very first Horror of the Rails story that's gonna be put, in my opinion, in the outstanding category. Alrighty, now for something in the mines. Now this one is another very, very, very memorable one. It utilizes those like seven seconds worth of shots that, that were filmed for a Thomas music video of Stepney being in that very, very suspicious shed. Stepney is traveling home one night in the fog when all of a sudden he and his crew encounter a signalman in well, his signal box, of course. And then the signalman says it's too dangerous to continue on and lets the crew stay in the signal box and, and allows Stepney to rest in a shed a, a few hundred yards away. However, Stepney's night in that shed would be a night he would never forget. This story is spot on. The spooky tone of the story and the phenomenal voice actors in here is what, and not to mention the music and sound effects, are what make it so good. 84F Studios did an absolutely fantastic job at voicing Stepney. And the overall plot of the story is very, very dark. It's very dark, but it's, it's very, very good. So, uh, and because of that, I'm gonna put it in the outstanding category. Okay, next story, The Tale of the Bad Engine, written by Richard Jordan. Now, this one is a fairly good one. Uh, so the engine's telling ghost stories, it's Halloween, when a thought stri strikes Henry, and he tells the story, and the story in question is a story that, on that only two of his colleagues will remember, those of which are Edward and Gordon. It's been a while since I've listened to it, and I'm not sure if it's actually confirmed to be 98462, but I think it might be, but I'm, I can't say I'm sure. Now, we've seen many, many, many interpretations of 98462, and this one isn't bad. It's pretty well written overall. Richard Jordan is, in fact, Scarlowy123, the creator of Soda of the Dark Times, which was the first Thomas fan project that Alfred debuted in. And it's it's kind of nice to see him doing a, a different take on his character, and that's one of the things that I like about this story. Not to mention, as always, I know I'm gonna say the voice acting is really good, but it is very good. However, because we've seen so many takes on 98462 in the past, uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put this in okay. It's definitely not worthy enough to go in the bad category. Okay, the truth about Scrap. Now, this one is a very, 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 very good one. Uh, it's where James is taking a goods train far away from Sodor, and then he meets a stranger there who then will, who reveals, as the title would suggest, the truth about Scrap. First off, I really like how James is the, is the character learning this lesson in here, because he's the individual who needed to learn the lesson the most. But this episode changes that, and then he's left with a little bit of truth, and that, that steam engines are not the only ones that are being scrapped. One thing I really like, spoiler alert, is Diesel's return. It allows James to see that, yo, this is happening, and it's not stopping. And not to mention the voice actors, oh my goodness. The voice for the first Diesel that James meets is 
is without doubt the best voice in here. His I can't remember the name of the user, but his voice somehow manages to give you chills. Like, there's just something about it. And of course, we have Mr. Merlin fan playing Diesel, and a nice addition of the German of Sodor playing James. So, because of the tone and the plot twist and the voice actors in here, I'm gonna put this in the great category. Okay, Six Lovely Tenders. Now, I really like this one. I really like the, ver the variety of voice actors in here and the overall surprising plot twists in this story. Although Duck didn't mean it, he is actually the one at fault for whatever, for what's going on in this story. And because of the voice actors in story, I'm gonna put it in the great category. Okay, Broken Wings. Now, now you're probably wondering, I haven't seen this on Narrow Gage's channel before, because this video can actually be found on 84F Studios' channel. Now, the only reason I'm putting this this video on the list is because it has the Horror of the Rails 3 intro, so the only thing I can, I can assume is that Joe and 84F Studios worked, t worked together on this video, kinda, and 84F Studios did the most work on here and uploaded it to his channel, of course. Now, I really, really like this story because we learn about the whole state and demeanor of the Coldy Fell Railways number one. If you know the railway series really, really well, you'll probably know who I'm talking about. And the engine in question and the manager of the Coldy Fell Railway have a very heated argument till the manager's had enough and puts the Coldy Fell Railways number one in his place. 84F Studios' delivery on the manager is top notch. It is so, so good. Throughout the story, you can tell that he's getting very, very, very angry. The voice actor for Godred is the same voice actor for the stranger James meets in The Truth About Scrap. They both do an excellent job at voicing in this video, so because, because of the story and the voicing and the music, I'm gonna be putting it in the... I'm gonna put it in the outstanding category. For the final episode of Horror of the Rails 3, Great Waterton. A teenage boy who loves exploring is browsing through the internet when he finds a secret place called Great Waterton. He travels there and finds the place. However, he encounters something at that place that he will never ever forget for the rest of his days. I honestly find myself listening to this story the most because of the plot twist of it and the music in here. Oh my goodness, that piece of music when the kid is walking through the forest is absolutely amazing. It's definitely one of the best pieces of soundtrack chosen for War of the Rails. And not to mention the amazing voice acting in here. Narrow Gage honestly has a huge gift for voice acting. His voice can sound so, so peaceful and calming, but at the same time, it can sound so eerie. And his British accent is just icing on the cake right there. I'm gonna put this in the outstanding category because of the story of voice acting, music, everything about it is just all around great. Okay, so for the first ep episode of Horror of the Rails 4, we have Diesel's Demons, written by Richard Jordan. Now, this one is another pretty good one. When Diesel nearly causes an accident for the Express, the Fat Controller sends, sends him to work at the scrapyards. And on a normal night working there, he starts to hear things that make him regret all that he said about steam engines. This one is pretty, pretty good because of the eerie tone in it. Because the voices that are calling out to Diesel and scolding him for his accident actions is what makes Diesel regret it so much. Now, this story is kind of short too at only 7 minutes, but but it's still pretty good. So, I think I'm going to put it in the um should I put it in the okay category or the nice? Um, because of the eerie tone, I'm going to put it in the nice category. The next story is Company for Boko. Boko is taking the night goods to the mainland, but he gets lost in the yard and comes across an unfamiliar shed. Not wanting to go into the fog any further, he decides to park himself inside the shed for the night. He then meets a very old but friendly engine in there. But when Boko wakes up, he finds out that the shed and the engine are gone. Now, this story, without doubt, is my absolute favorite story from The Buried Truck. It's mainly because of the mist of the mystery the story has, especially at the end. The general audio story is also pretty nice, the voicing is pretty good, and Narrow Gage pretty nicely voiced the old engine that Boko talked to. Because of those reasons, I'm gonna be putting it in the nice category. 
Okay, now for the tragic tale of Roger, the finale to Horror of the Rails 4, Part 1. We never really hear too much about Toby's old life when he was working at the harbor with the other tram engines. One of those tram engines was a very arrogant and rude one known as Roger. Word had it that a new tramway was being built and that the harbor master would choose one of his engines to run that line. Roger is very keen on, run on running the branch and always boasts about his apparent superior strength. Unfortunately, in Roger's overconfidence, he gets his comeuppance. This story is really nicely done as well. The choices of music for this for this installment are very nicely done, not to mention that the narrator is someone other than Narrow Gage. My final decision for a place in a category, uh, I'm gonna say it's have to, gonna have to go in the nice category. Oh boy, the, we got the final three, and this, this is where it gets good. In the half engine, James witnesses something that traumatizes him, and then he tells the other engines in the shed that night. Then Thomas tells the others of what he thinks James may have seen. Gordon doesn't believe Thomas, but then a few nights later, an event occurs that changes Gordon's entire perception of Thomas's story and what James saw. I really love how Thomas was used in this story, because normally it would be Edward telling the scary story, but in this story, NCO Pictures, the writer of the story, chose Thomas to be the one who knows the legend instead. And this worked to the story's advantage, because Gordon knows Thomas, he knows that Thomas Thomas is usually cheeky and tricky, which misleads the big engine into brushing the story off as make-believe. And because of the narration and the story, I'm gonna place this story up in the great category. Okay, here we are, down to the final two. In The Creature of Scarloy, Duncan is getting very, very tired of Sir Handel teasing him because he got scared on the old iron bridge. Scarloy tells a story to the other engines that relates to what he's named after. I'm gonna put the story in the outstanding category because, first off, I love the voice actors in here. That one guy's, like, voice that who played uh, the stranger in Truth About Scrap, I can't remember his username at the moment. I do like how he narrated the story rather than voicing another character. Well, technically, if you listen to it, he technically did voice a character, that of which will not be named in this video, to avoid spoilers. The surprising and unfortunate end to the story is what makes it all the more bone-chilling. And as such, I'm going to be putting it in the outstanding category. It is absolutely one of my favorite Horror of the Rails audio stories. Inner Demon? Okay, let's be honest. This deserves a spot at the very top. First off, it really gives us a good look at the current state of Luke after his name has been cleared by Thomas. Another reason why I like this is because look how long it is. It's, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's literally 90 minutes long. Like, if they had, if there was this, there were moving visuals in here, this would totally be a movie, and I'm not criticizing it because it doesn't have moving visuals, it's an audio story. That is why I am selecting Inner Demon as the top Horror of the Rails story. So yeah, that's all of the Horror of the Rails stories ranked, and I hi if you haven't seen some of these, I'd highly recommend checking them out, and please, go subscribe to Narrow Gauge. This series has been going on for five years now and it's had a really, really, really good run, and will continue to inspire many others to this day. Be sure to subscribe, and let me know in the comments what your favorite episodes of Horror of the Rails are. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye!